The fog is getting thicker and the stakes are getting higher as women fight for fairness and a level playing field across all sorts of sports in this country. Now one women's track and field champion is claiming that female athletes are retiring in droves and that they'd rather hang up their cleats than compete with biological males. Track star Selena Sewell was forced to compete against biological males in high school and she's now trying to appeal Connecticut's law allowing trans athletes in women's sports. She joined America Reports last week to talk about the exodus of women from athletic competition watch. It's devastating that there are women out there who are retiring or changing their events because they're being forced to compete against biological males where those males, if they were competing in the men's category, they would be barely mediocre, but in the women, they are dominating the field. And it's just a very extremely fr and frustrating ex ex situation and it should not be happening. Women's sports should be preserved as just women's sports. So. Tammy, how do you keep it fair? Because you obviously want fair competition. That is that is the point of anti-doping agencies mm -hmm. and making sure that every sport, every governing body has rules. But this is patently unfair. What do you do about it? Uh, it is unfair. And I think that something that Americans have to notice and that transgender people actually notice, this is very few individuals. If, if you're actually embracing how you feel as a woman and making life changes, then the last thing you're going to do is harm that contingency, right? That that con constituency. You're gonna. You're not gonna harm those people. You get it. An average fair person gets it, right? So we've been hearing whether it's Martina Navratilova uh, or Caitlyn Jenner, other women who are involved, transgender or not, get this. The problem, especially with high school though and college, is that it's sports, but it's also about scholarships. So it's about ha getting into that higher education, being able to, and of course, sports teaches you that you can be a star, but you need a team and all of that. It's the kind of thing that men have always been able to learn and women have been cheerleaders. And then it's about competition with each other. Sports is important as a life lesson, but for girls in high school, this is about what college am I gonna go to? What scholarships am I gonna get to? Which is what has been so important about Title IX. The more sp women's sports there are, the more scholarships there are. And so if you're asked to boycott or not go to a meet in, in college, you're at risk because your scholarship is based on that sport, inevitably. So this is a, a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. And women, of course, are, uh, it's horrible, but this is a dynamic that we fought to overcome of women losing opportunities because certain biological men uh, want that, those spaces. And for some reason, uh, some are ab uh, you know, abdicating them and women have to fight back. It's got to be in the legal framework. We've had victories and losses in that regard, but it's got to continue. And, you know, for so long, our, our mothers and grandmothers fought very hard so we could play with the boys, but not necessarily play against the boys. But now, unfortunately, if you speak out, uh, then you will show up in an internet search. And then when you're applying to a college for a scholarship and your name comes up as the advocating, advocating for fairness in women's sports, you are then targeted as a bigot. Yeah, this for me is the most problematic aspect of what's going on, uh, that there's this contingent of people that feel like this is settled. And if you dare to speak out, even if you are among the very people that are affected, among the athletes, then you get labeled with these horrific labels. In reality, the discussion is still very much ongoing in these various sports bodies, governing bodies of sports all around the globe, not just here in the United States, are trying to figure out a way to engineer fairness. And they adjust a hormone level and a time of transition and all sorts of things to try and create this fair in inclusivity. And then they walk that back and change the hormone level and do something different another year. Uh, but we have seen very high profile victories of trans women in women's sports. And that's created uh, more focus on this. And now athletes are beginning to speak out in various contingencies. Um, it, one, there was a major victory of a cyclist, a transgender cyclist, Austin Kelps, just recently uh, out in New Mexico, Union Cyclist International. And one of uh, uh, cyclists, great cyclers, Allison Snyder, tweeted about this, a former world champion cyclist, current IC UCI rules that allow males to compete in female cycling events are not fair to female athletes. Time for UCI to admit the current rule situation is unsustainable and leaving a black mark on cycling as a fair sport for females. And UCI went on to you know, acknowledge this, that they're taking this into consideration. UCI also hears the voices of female athletes. So it's an ongoing conversation and no one should be silenced. 
Um, and, you know, it, cycling has obviously had its own controversies with doping oh, yeah. over the years. You know, they, they took Lance Armstrong's Tour de France victories away from him. They would have had to have stripped everyone else of their podiums and yellow jerseys because they were all doping. But you can't do that anymore. And testosterone is a performance enhancer. Uh, biological males who go through puberty have more of it. You know, they, they have a physiological advantage. So should women be able to juice? We watch a lot of sports, right? And, and obviously, you have a husband that was a former athlete. And we know this. In professional sports and in the Olympics, all right, steroids, HGH, they are banned. Why are they banned? Because they give one person an advantage over another in a chemical and biological way. And this is the same exact thing to your point. It's an advantage. It is unfair. And if women in, on the college level or even the high school level, if they speak out, these scholarships here, a state school these days, What's UCLA going for these days? Sixty, seventy thousand dollars uh, all in? State. No, I mean no. It's a, it's a the USC. Yes, I mean USC is a garbage right. school and it's a private school. <laughs> oh no, no, no. And their uh, oh, their boy. tuition now is much higher my, than UCLA, my, my which school. is the, the number one public <laughs> university in the country. Congratulations on Thank that. You. And you're Thank wearing you UCLA much. blue right no now. Uh, yeah, but Stanford, Duke, you, you name the school, you're talking $70,000, $80,000 a year. You stand up, then you're treated like Riley Gaines. What happened with her? She goes to do a speech at the University of San Francisco. She has to barricade herself inside of a room because she's being physically threatened. So people say, well, more women should speak up. Easier said than done because the mob will come for you. Yes. Yeah, they will. Um, Riley Gaines put her name to her critique of biological men unfairly coming into women's sports. A lot of other swimmers complained anonymously, did not put their name to it. One of whom said, I'm a liberal. I, I typically am, am with you, but I can't be on this. This is basic fairness. And I just think to those young women out there in college, my sister, who was one of them, who skipped spring break to train, mm -hmm. who when their friends are going to sororities or to parties, you know, they're putting the time in at the track or in, in the swim, in the pool. You know, these young women are the one who are hurt. They put endless hours in and for what? For, for nothing. I, I'm not surprised people are quitting. Yeah, and, and it's going to have a giant ripple effect, and, and maybe Martina Navratilova is right, and we have to have an open category so everyone can compete and everyone can compete Makes fairly. Sense. Hey, everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.